Welcome to the show. I'm just putting some magic white on the canvas. I put a little bit on and then I'll just continue it over in this corner. I want to point out one thing about the drawing that I've done in preparation for the painting of Mermaid. We have uh, a drawing, but we have covered it with a cutout. So that's kind of nice and that goes right over black acrylic. You can see the black acrylic under there a little bit, so it's not just asking you to take my word for it, is it? All right, I have magic white over the whole canvas, and now we'll go ahead and start putting it together. Let's go ahead down to the palette. We have several colors, and I'll show them to you. I'll show the three or four so that we don't have to come back each time. The top of the sky is too black. Well, let's change that. Let's make it too phthalo blue. One ivory black into white, and then just a little phthalo green that softens the gray into a greenish tone. That'll be the top of the sky. The next area in the sky, a little lower, is a permanent red and white. And then we come over, we have sun yellow. Oh, sun yellow and white, what is that? That's a new color, cadmium yellow and white. That's our sun. All right, let's go ahead and put the top uh, color on. And this is with a bunny brush. I'll dip in just a little bit. We have the magic white on, so we don't have to thin the paint out any on the palette. When I do this, I go right over into the mountain a little bit. No concern about that. Spread it around at the top. You notice the, how it thins out just with the magic white being there to help it to do so. Isn't that nice? As far as uh, any direction, well, we might have a little bit of a sweep this way. We're going to have the wind kind of coming back this way. You notice as I did that, I put a little blue down there. That'll take care of itself as we put the pink on. You hear so many artists as they're doing a demonstration and they make a little mistake, they say, oh, that's all right, no problem. And it's really true. You don't have to worry about all those little items. Okay, this is a red and white. Because as we put it on, you uh, just take care of it yourself. You might find that you pick up the blue and you think, oh gosh, that's the way I'll do it next time on purpose. So that's how accidental things are done. The old serendipity of oil painting. Okay, I'm pushing this around. I'll save one little spot that we'll have uh, where the sun will go. So the sun will go on a rather pure area. Again, I'm going into the mountain area and I'll push this around, not worrying too much at the time if I have a lot of blend or so on because we can take a big sweeping blend in a minute. This is so neat. I want to say one thing about uh, a kind of a responsibility of an artist. See, now I'm painting a mermaid, and then you can say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. How does it look to you? But it isn't totally your responsibility. I think beauty is in the eye of the creator. So what does the creator, the one who's doing it, think as he's doing it? Do you have an idea of making something that has a lot of quality and elegant and then it'll show that way, it really will. And that, that's where the responsibility is on my shoulders today to make you happy, to show you how you can do it. And I might say one thing as I go over further. Let me, let me go ahead and put in some water. This is the two uh, thalo blue and one black. Same thing we put up the top of the sky, but it has less white and of course no green. We'll put this down. And now what I was going to say, you look at that and you say, oh my goodness, I don't know how to draw anatomy buck. What are you doing to me? And you know what I say? Check the book. Because in the book, we'll have a tracing of the mermaid. And then you can put your acrylic on, your black acrylic, and then go ahead and put the cutout over it. It's very easy to do when you have the tracing done. And I understand that. I had to learn to draw too. I might have uh, said it to you before, but let me say it again. I didn't start until I was an adult in art. And I mean, I didn't draw, I didn't paint, I didn't know anything about art. So uh, now that I know Art and his wife Mabel, <laughs> oh, that is an uncle. I have an uncle Art. But anyway, once I know Art, and then it's up to me to go ahead and pursue the drawing, pursue learning how to do it. Okay, let's go ahead and put a little different color in the eye of the wave. This is phthalo green added to the sun color. Do you see how much I'm making use of that uh, bunny brush? Boy, does that do the job. This green color we'll find will come out uh, helpful later as we start putting on some of the color on our Miss Lady. She's no myth, she's a myth. Okay, we're a little bit down there too, and this is just blends in with the green. I mean, the green blends in with the blue. Look at the accidental looks. I hadn't planned on that, but because it worked there, let's try it out here. 
you see some variety of colors in the water. Okay, now I'm going to uh, go ahead and put some color on the, on the cliff. Now the cliff has, uh, well, we have two black, two white, and one violet. My gosh, is that going to be powerful. Let's push this up, and I'll just start this so we see where it is, and then I'll go ahead and uh, block in some other colors with this. I'm, I'm run, I ran down the palette, the same color, same brush. I have this flat uh, badger brush, and this will go for the um, rock that she's sitting on. Oh, it's great. The stories about mermaids and the sailors. Sometimes sailors beware. I wonder why they'd say beware. We're going to paint a mermaid that, um, yeah, maybe you better be aware as well. Okay, so we have the rocks which will go there. We'll establish those a little more. I'll go ahead and fill this in just a little bit more too. But let's go ahead now and put the foam on. So we're kind of touching base with several things. And we'll put that brush down. We'll pick up the fan brush. The fan brush is going to pick up the same color again as the water. It has more white, so that means two blue, one black, some white, but into this one I've added some, oh my gosh, some rose color. Isn't that pretty? This is all quite uh, dark because it's in a kind of a silhouette, and then the lights will splash down just a little bit on the top. But the real impact in this painting happens to be the gal the graceful hair, and then the light against the uh, sky. So we have just a little time left here. We'll put this around. We'll take and put a little bit more. Same thing, out in the distance, like this. And let's see, what else do we do? Well, what I'll do during the break, you stay tuned, and I'll go ahead and I'll uh, fill in the rest of the mountain and the foam, and then we'll blend it a little bit. And when we come back, we'll go on to the gal because she needs to have some attention. While you were gone, of course, I went ahead and did what I said I was going to do. I filled in the mountain with the uh, color, and then I went ahead and blend a little bit with the bunny brush. Now I'm taking some of the red and white from the sky and putting it down here as reflections. I think it's time to do a little unveiling, don't you? Let's go up to the canvas, and we'll take and see what happens here. We have this contact paper on there, and we're going to pull it off. Ooh, it came loose. It's black acrylic underneath. Oh, she's coming out great, isn't she? What happened there? Oh, her hand got a little large, so we'll just push this over. That's all right. Now the tail. The tail of one city. Fine. Now what I intend to do is to go ahead and put some color on her, and then on the next segment we'll, we'll take and do a little close-up of her face so you get a, a chance to see that done more closely. Okay, I have a flesh color that is equal yellow ochre and deep orange. And then into that, I've added violet. Isn't that a nice color? This will be the color that we'll put on the flesh. And we'll go ahead and just push this on. And it works so well on that black canvas. This uh, on the black acrylic part of the canvas. Now you notice as you look around on this, you're going to see just a little white. Uh, so I can push out slightly. And what will happen with that, it softens. It softens into the uh, magic white because that's magic white that's out there just on the edge. Okay, we'll come down. And I won't take time to do the face now because, as I said, we'll show you a close-up on that. How low do you go? Right in there. So I'll be filling all this in. And then this uh, little brush we'll take. I'm using a, uh, the, what is this called? This is a, <laughs> is that a filbert? That's what it is. It's a badger filbert. Okay. I'm going to come over with the green. This is thalo green with a little yellow ochre. And this will come down on to the special suit. Isn't that a nice green color? I'll make a lot of use of the black as I do this. I have to tell you about one of my art students. Her name was Dorothy, and she loved mermaids. She did a lot of them. It was so surprising. She even kind of believed that they were there because one day I had... Uh, uh, Dorothy was in one room taking a class, and this other gal was in the other room. And when I came in to help Dorothy, she says, There are really mermaids. Brenda said so. I said, No, come on. No, they're not real mermaids. Yes, there is. She, honest. And what happened, we come to find out that Brenda had said that the fish that were around the mermaids, she had seen those. But she thought that Brenda had actually seen mermaids. But, you know, I, I kind of think Dorothy did see mermaids. Uh, now, Dorothy passed on, and I want to tell you something that kind of relates to uh, her passing. 
I went down to a place once that was selling old paintings, and I found one of Dorothy's paintings. Let me show it to you. It's a copy of a painting. You know what that was listed for? One dollar. Oh my gosh, I felt so bad when I saw that. I, I allowed myself to be depressed for 10 minutes. But then the people that were buying it were very happy. And I realized that Dorothy had done the best she had could while she was living. Let me show you another painting. This is from an advertisement I received recently. Renoir, $78,100,000 that was sold for. So what's the point? Death alone does not make something worthwhile. But do the best you can at all times. And then that's the important thing. Let me show you one other thing here. We're taking the rock color and coming over with the dark green color. And this will give me some of the shadows on the suit. We put this down like this. This will go on the suit. You can't see it much, but it just softens the green in a little bit and it comes down on the tail. Now when we come back, of course, uh, after the break, we'll go ahead and do the face, like I said. Now let's do a couple things before that happens. And I'm going to clean the bunny brush and we'll come with the same color of the water but it has a little more white than the water. So we're using that mixture quite a lot, the two phthalo blue and the one black. Notice as I put this on, what happens? It becomes a cloud. Uh, it went on sort of dark to start with, didn't it? But then as it blends into the paint that is there, it softens and you can just build this up however you want. I want to be just a little bit above her head so that uh, compositionally it's, it's quite nice. You have the long, tall mountain there and you have the building around there. I think putting the pink in first is very helpful because you can see how you save the pink against it and yet the pink feels like it's behind it. Another thing I want to point out as I do this is that um, as I come across, you see how that dark is there and then you have the sunlight on the water. So you're creating a little contrast right there. Now I did one thing kind of um, just in hurrying a little bit, which be a little more careful. Some came over and went on the arm, but just touch it off. Actually, it, it's quite a nice blend. When they talk about lost and found edges, that's a good example of that, where you have some softness, almost lost. I know one artist, he would go ahead, after he'd finished a painting, he'd on purpose go back and soften, lose about half the edges. Okay, let's see what we have left to do. Now, I'm going to put a little highlight on the uh, foam. So I'll come with the sun color and let's put just a little extra white in it and this will come over on top of the foam right in here. Splash that along. We'll have a little bit up on this side splashing there and a little bit over there. Now I, I need to refine these a little bit but with, let's get the placement. This is especially strong right in the path. Right in the path right from the sun straight down. A little bit over in here and then let's go ahead, one more thing that uh, I'll go ahead and I'll probably refine a little bit uh, while you're watching an important item. But this is uh, pink and I'm going to go a little, well I was going to go a little more white. No, I think I'll take the pink as it is. This will come up on the mountain. So this is the same color that we had out in the sky. Isn't that something? But look how strong it is and yet you can control it by the more you touch it, the less vitality in it. And it's so easy to make a caricature out of things. But if you put it on and then you relate it to everything else. So I'll continue doing this and then I'll soften the lights a little bit. Okay, let's come up to the canvas and will you please notice a little change. We've made the mermaid come a little closer to us. You're going to enjoy this because this is one that I'm following and here's how we'll do it. We'll do it on the large one and then you'll see how it looks on the small one. This is the same flesh color that we used on the arms and body of the regular mermaid. And that was equal yellow ochre and deep orange, add a little violet. You see the drawing that's on there? Let me repeat, that drawing will be in the book so you won't have any concern about it. I've done this with a white carbon, so it shows up against the black, very lightly so that some of the darks of the canvas act as the dark of your face, in your face. <laughs> Okay, let's go over here a little bit. We'll put a little bit of this. We're go kind of going over the whole face with this color. I'll sneak down on the neck just a little bit underneath there. And then this same color, we started putting on the, uh, the regular mermaid painting so we don't have to do too much of that. 
Okay, now after you get that much on, and you notice it's very small amount of paint, very small amount of paint, and you really just feather it out slightly. Okay, we come now, and this has, uh, let's, let's change brushes. Let's come over to this brush, a round brush, and we're going to use equal, no, this is two parts of burnt umber and one part of alizarin crimson. This will give us some pretty good shadows, so I'm coming into the same areas. I'll come up with the eyebrows. Isn't it nice to put on eyebrows that you would like to have? Now somebody asked, who is this beautiful lady? I don't know, I've never met her. I just uh, have seen her out there on the rock. I don't know who that is. Okay, here we come down and we put a little bit for the eye, a little bit on this eye. Each of these are placed, but they will be softened a little bit. A nostril is showing right there. Okay, and then let's come down and we'll go to the palette. Let's pick up a color that is the face uh, flesh color, but it has a little more violet in it. Look at the difference between those two. This will come down and be sort of what you would call half tones. So this will be just a little darker, and at the same time, that half tone puts a little tint in the face. Isn't that pretty? Notice the kind of reddish color it, it gives to us. Now this color, all the flesh, is uh, done sort of in, sil not silhouette, but in shadows. That's the word I want, in shadows, because the light is from behind. That, uh, that cheek is just a little wide, so I'll take a little black, uh, excuse me, umbered alizarin. This is also the uh, color of the hair, so we'll sneak in just a little bit of a nice curve there. Those are the small, subtle things that you want to watch when you paint portraits or no matter what you paint, the subtle items. I'm going to um, put a little more alizarin crimson into the flesh color, and I'm doing that on the palette with the round brush. And then we'll come up and we make the lips. We already have those drawn, just a little lip there and a little there, and then underneath, a small one. I think I'll have to come through there. Yeah, see now, you're, you're seeing the white of the drawing, so it almost looks like teeth. So we'll take some of the umber and alizarin and just take that out. Now I might point out this, that I've left a lot of the, um, the white lines just so you can see it, but uh, you would go ahead with your uh, paint and you could cover those a little bit. Now as I said, we'll soften this just gently, just tapping it with a dry brush and, oops, what happened there? You really grew an eyebrow, didn't you? Okay, let's call that enough because we want her to be very secondary to the whole theme. I'm going to take and loosen this. We'll take this down, and we'll put back up our gal. Let's see if we can just push this up very easily and quickly. Well, that was easily. It's not necessarily quickly. There we are. Okay, we have several segments we want to do here, and uh, we'll go ahead and take those one at a time. The first one that I want to do is come to the hair. And what I'll do, I'll take the uh, badger brush, and we'll take the umber and alizarin. We've been using this on the flesh color. This was where we put it on the eyebrows and so on. Now watch this. This is so much fun. I'm going to squeeze just a little bit off. And I'll take and just flow. Whew. Isn't that neat? Then I need to determine how much to use. If this is quite a hard line from the acrylic, well then just a little extra paint will cover that line. And you notice another nice thing that's happening is that I am picking up a little bit of the background sky, and as I do so, it lightens the hair. You can go just so free, and even a little bit on this side. Oh my gosh, she is really there. Let's go ahead and put just a couple little items on that'll help her. We'll take, uh, this is yellow and white, and a touch of phthalo green. Ooh, is that pretty. Now where does this go? Watch this. Boom, right up on the jewel. Right there, a small little jewel. The same color comes down, and we'll put this on to here. It will come down there. Okay, we'll leave that. And then let's go, we got the hair, we got, we need to put some arm highlights on. The arm highlights are the orange and yellow ochre equal parts without, without the violet. So we put this right on the shoulder, wham, right there, a little bit right on the hip. So you put it on at very strategic places. We have just a little time left here. Let's, let's put just a touch of red in with that too. See, this is something that you decide kind of at the last minute. Did you see me? Did I go too fast? I hope not. Okay, a little bit of light right in there. And then I feel like that red was so good. I'll just take a touch more of the same thing and put it in here. 
we put a little bit on that side of the arm. So we're really flying along on our mermaid. Isn't she a doll? Ooh, I love her. Okay, I think that'll be fine. We can uh, go ahead and blend this just a little bit. I do feel that we could put a, a touch of light that we uh, mixed earlier. This is the phthalo uh, green mixed into the yellow and white. And let's put just a little sparkle that comes down through there. Just slightly. We can't put much on, but that'll be enough there. Let's go ahead and put the final segments on our mermaid painting. I'm choosing to put just a distant sailboat in the uh, painting, and I'm going to use very little bit of the watercolor. Now, I took and scratched out where I want the sailboat to go, rather than having a pencil line there, so it'll be very softly done. We'll come up, and this is with the watercolor, as we said. This is just about right, where it's almost in her view. And doesn't that recall a famous story? You remember, uh, who was it? Ulysses? And uh, where he went sailing and they had these sirens. And you know what? He was tied to the mast as they came nearby so that he wouldn't be distracted by their beautiful singing. Now my wife told me, she says, uh, you go ahead and use that rope and you stay right at the easel. So I'll still be here next week. I sure expect you to be back here too. I've really enjoyed doing this segment of uh, The Mermaid. Now there's our sailboat, Ulysses. You just go right sailing safely by. I want to put on a little foam patterns on the painting, on the ocean. So let's come down to, this is a foam color. And you might have noticed, or you might have even heard, I kind of jiggled into the thinner a little bit. So we have this uh, a little more loose. And then we'll come over here and just put in a few silhouette foam patterns. Those will be a feeling of form. They help the wave move. Okay, I want to go just a little lighter than that, so we'll take a little white and come back into the color. And let's put these just a little bit down here, a little bit lower. And then let's go ahead and put down a little more impact at the bottom of the, um, of, of the, fra <laughs> the canvas, the frame, what are you? <laughs> okay, yellow and white. See on the knife? Did I go too fast? You can see while it's up here. We might even sneak a little bit out there. I think I just put a hair on your arm. Well, it's close enough. Okay, then straight down, right there. And if you don't feel you have enough impact up above, let's put it right there. Hey, it's been great sailing with you today. I'll be here next week. You make sure you're there too, will you? I really enjoy being with you.